Okay, so, Mr. Radigan. You want me talking to your iPad? Yeah. Okay. You can talk to me. Okay. Um, so, if you had to, you know, send a message to the Tea Party, tell them why they should be out here. Uh, the Tea Party was America's first chance to align around the principle of ending the unfairness in the relationship between powerful, wealthy interests in our government. The Tea Party was right. The Tea Party rapidly lost that principle and became a vehicle for a wide variety of agendas that had nothing to do with those principles. But the people and the soul and intention of the people, I believe, that are at the root of that movement are people who share the same exact principle as the people that are here, that share the same exact principle as people that look like me who don't go to Tea Party events or come here usually and have the same exact principle as a wide variety of other disenfranchised Americans who are unaffiliated. That principle is simple. A breach of unfairness by the wealthy and the government at the expense of the people will no longer be tolerated. The only question is, how big does the wave have to get and how long does the wave have to break before our government realizes that the people of this country can see the corrupt nature between power, money, and the government, and how that is happening with directly misaligned interests for all of us. The Tea Party, these people, and a wide variety of millions, hundreds of millions of other Americans are all scared, in my opinion, of a very simple fact, that a bought government will screw them over. And a simple alignment to identify and manifest the intent that is a cessation of the acceptance of the bought government is the single most important message that is being manifest in all of us, whether you're in this square, whether you're in the Tea Party, whatever you are. And the question for us is, what do we want to do with our intention? People will say, well, you need a policy agenda. Go with the Democrats. Go with the Republicans. Da, 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 da. Well, you know, my first question is, that is where good intentions go to die. Makes it easy in my me, opinion, that is where you get on but, you know, buses where you've purchased a one-way ticket to nowhere. To the brilliance of this and the brilliance of the Tea Party at its outset is that they are aligned around intention and principle. They are not wedded to mechanics and ideas. We have an abundance of mechanics and ideas in an open source society that will always be changing. But if we lack shared principles and goals, like fairness, like equality, like equal opportunity, we will never have them. And it's only if we have shared principles and goals that we will have them. And the question is this, will we allow the status quo powers that be in the government, in private interests, whether it's corporations, unions, I don't care, or in the media, to shatter the aligned interests of the 99% such that they are deprived once again of the opportunity to change the system. Only if we refuse, in my opinion, as a group of Americans, forget this square, only if we refuse to engage in their basic principle of divide and conquer through silly debates about different ideas, can we win as a country. And the Tea Party knows that, the Tea Party believes that. I talk to lots of people who identify themselves as Tea Partiers. They say, I say, what's the problem? They say, the government is bought and, and wealth should only, wealth, should only happen as a byproduct of solving problems together with aligned interests. There's nothing offensive about creating wealth, but wealth creation should only happen by working together to solve problems with aligned interests. The people in this community know that, the people in the Tea Party community know that, the libertarians down in Texas with Ron Paul know that, the progressives out in California know that, and quite honestly, the 99% knows that. The only, we are this close now, the 99%, and the only barrier to that proximity at this point is our own courage and resolve not to get sucked in by our own egos or by our own fears, but to maintain our residency in our intention so that we are able to maintain the focus on principle that will be required to deliver the message in mass to next year's presidential election, regardless of the candidates.
Uh, do you have a candidate that you like? I don't have a candidate that I like. I believe that the concept of heroes and villains, I do think Ron Paul has very good ideas. But, but at the end of the day, I do believe that the concept of heroes and villains in the political process, Ron Paul will save us. Bob Rubin screwed us. Barack Obama's my hero. Barack Obama's the hero. Nancy Pelosi's the devil. The whole hero and villain culture, which is very human and we all do it, I do it, we all do it, is a distraction from a system that is indifferent to who the people are. If it was going to happen, the Tea Party would have done it. Mm -hmm. If it was going to happen, Barack Obama would have done it. But the evidence is clear. The system is bought, and the power does not reside with the heroes or the villains. The power resides with those who are buying our democracy at an auction. And until we stop the auction, we cannot even begin to have the debate we are all so desperate to have. And then we can argue all day about our different ideas and all the rest of that. I would love to do that. I'm sure there's a bunch of great ideas. But I can't even have that debate when I'm working, when I live in an auction democracy. And, then, and, and the one thing that everybody agrees to is that engaging the auction democracy is the only agenda that will save us at this point in time. What about the, uh, what do you think of the Federal Reserve centrally planning our economy? You really want me to just give you a bunch of run-on sentences, don't you? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's like he's like he's like, like throwing meatballs. I'm like, all right. He's like, what does Radigan think about that? Well, I got you here. <laughs> <laughs> the Federal Reserve is just a manifestation of a flawed principle based on the ego of the elite. The Federal Reserve is not in and of itself the problem. The Federal Reserve is just a tool that is used to perpetuate the problem. The Federal Reserve is a metaphor for value, for wealth creation. And instead of having an economy that's based on working together to solve problems to create value and wealth, we have a banking system that invents it for the benefit of those who want to preserve power for themselves. The Federal Reserve is the, is the tool, it's like a shovel. And that's the shovel that they use to preserve the incumbent structure. Now, one thing on, on the old structure. The old structure was built, with, I believe, between 1900 and 2000 with many very good intentions. The world has changed, and the rate of change in the world is faster than it's ever been. And that is highly disruptive to incumbent businesses, banking, energy, the health process, education, etc. The, the ability to provide learning, health, investment, efficiency by the people here and around the world has taken a quantum leap. We can get much more for much less. But the fact of the matter is doing that betrays the profitability of legacy interests that are gatekeepers banking gatekeepers, energy gatekeepers, health gatekeepers, and the gatekeeper business has been obliterated by the internet. And so the gatekeeper businesses are paying our politicians to preserve their gatekeeper status at all of our expense. And the reality is we have to understand that only if we approach those in power with courage and resolve, this is what we are doing, this is over. But at the same time, with empathy and compassion, like you would an alcoholic who you're telling will no longer be able to drink. Because the fact of the matter is there are a lot of people that are even inside of these machines, who I myself and many of you may think of as devils or heroes, who are actually just soldiers in a war that is way beyond their doing. You may not be in favor of the war in Iraq. You may not be in favor of the war in Afghanistan. I am not. But you don't hold the view of that war as something that you then assign to the soldiers in that war. The soldiers in Iraq are soldiers in a bad war, in my opinion. The soldiers in Afghanistan are soldiers in a bad war in Afghanistan. And the question you have to ask yourself is, can I indict the war? Can I indict the banking system? Can I indict the political structure and change it with a harmonic wave, which is what you're looking at, without feeling the need to become violent towards those who are in it. The people that I look, the person who I believe had the highest stakes in this situation and is the model for all of us, it's a cliche, but it's true, is Nelson Mandela. 
who when he became president of South Africa, there was a movement in South Africa for the black community in South Africa to go on a murderous rampage for the white people in South Africa. And they were very justified in that rage because the white community in South Africa had been, been murdering the black community in South Africa forever. Nelson Mandela rolls up, black president, leader of the black community, and he walks into the black community and he says, let's go make friends with the white people. They're like, he's done God straight crazy. But the fact of the matter is he knew that if only if he could find an alignment to move forward for South Africa, that ultimately could he move to a place that was healthier for his own people that were his constituency and those who were historically his enemies. And we are at that moment where we are either going to harness our collective agreement that we have a bought government and that is the issue for this election, period. Or we will fall into the traditional splintering that will allow the status quo to perpetuate its power by making the people that look different than different people and by making the people that do different jobs and different people fight with each other over who's right. And that's a lost fight. And the, the reason why I asked Deepak Chopra to come down here with me tonight to talk to this crowd was because he is the best person that I know on the subject of intention and understanding and manifesting your intent not in crusading for a political outcome of some kind. And I believe that it is only our own ability internally to ask ourselves, as he said, what kind of a world do I want to live in? And what am I going to do to manifest that world with intent? Our egos get lost in outcomes. We're like, oh, they should do my idea, or they should do this idea. Why don't mm -hmm. they? I mean, listen, I went on MSNBC for three years. I was like, if these people just listen to me, it could fix the whole thing. <laughs> Everybody thinks that. It's a waste of energy because until we actually get principles and goals in place, we're, we're, we're arguing about ideas on a sinking ship, and I don't want to do that. And it's a ship that, it's a magnificent ship. Why wouldn't we do this? You know what I'm saying? I don't, it doesn't even make sense to me why, like, it's, this is the most rational goddamn thing I've ever seen in my entire life. <laughs> hey, Dylan, quick question. Yeah. Do you think this movement has the opportunity to uh, uh, earn the political clout that the Tea Party does. I think that this movement is, as I see it, has an opportunity to transcend politics, reach out and expand to include Tea Partners, to include the root strikers up in Boston, to include the, uh, all, all sorts of people the police. around, uh, to include the cops outside this square, so that we are now in aligned principle. And I believe, remember, Einstein said this, you cannot solve a problem with the same consciousness that created the problem. And it's only if you manifest whatever the next tick up in consciousness is. The consciousness now has been us versus them. Since the 1960s, we are at a moment where it's just us. And the us, we are just one enormous group of people, not in this square, but on this planet and in this country. All of us are tea partiers on some level. All of us are occupiers. All of us are that intention, which is the frustration with a world that lacks fairness. So I actually believe that the possibilities of the energy here, I don't know what the, I can't speak for the people here or myself. I could get hit by a bus, right, walking home tonight. But I can speak for the permanence of the energy here such that the energy has the potential not only to represent a political voice, but more, much more importantly, has the energy here has to represent, to, to, to represent a voice of principle of human beings. And it's the voice of principles of human beings that matter the most right now because it is the principles of our humanity that are being breached by the Bach government. Thank you. Thank you. Ego is our enemy. What's that? Ego is our Ego enemy. Is our enemy. I mean, the interesting thing is that, yeah, I mean, if you talk, it's hard, you know? But if you work from a place of gratitude, if you work from a place of love, if you work from a place of compassion, if you work from a place of equanimity, and if you, when you look in the, yourself in the eye, what I do with myself is I look at myself in the mirror and you're like, oh, he's like, you look pretty good. I'm my fucking jacket on, I'm pretty good. Look yourself in the eyes, look in your eyeball, and ask yourself, am I feeling gratitude? Am I feeling love? Am I feeling equanimity? Am I feeling compassion? If you ask yourself that, what you'll see is, because remember, the projection is the reflection. 
So you see whatever you're projecting when you look in the mirror, and then as you calibrate your own intentions, you'll see your eyes sparkle with clarity. And all of a sudden, you can still wield power, you can still do all these things, but you're doing it from a place of compassion, equanimity, and love, as opposed to a place of ego. Ego says, I'm right and you're wrong. Ego says, I'm us, you're them. Principle says, we are. Respect all of us, and I will respect you. And if that's not a Tea Party message, if that's not an Occupier message, if that's not an American message, if that's not a message of the people of the earth, I do not know what is. And the difference, the only thing, here's the thing, you guys. This shit's been going on for as long as there have been people, rich people in government. The pharaohs, the Egyptians, the samurai in London. There's nothing new about this, okay? The only thing that's new is that for the first time in the history of human existence, we have the ability to connect through this unified field that is the digital universe. And as a result, there's so much more shared information that the capacity for the unspoken masses to represent themselves through digital waves is without precedent. The question is, will those waves spill in a way that is self-destructive with rage? Or will those waves be harnessed in a way that actually alters the ecosystem. Remember, people don't create results. Ecosystems create results. Environments. There's thousands of variables happening at the same time that create every outcome. Everybody wants to get in there, myself included. I can feel it in my own head. And, I, and we'll get this, I'll, this, I'll give them a list. I'll just give them a list and then we'll do my list and we'll be fine. And that's wrong. Not because your list is wrong, but because you don't know everything else that exists that you don't know. And you have to have the humility to understand that there are things that constantly are manifesting and existing that you simply don't understand or know because nobody does. That's what the unified field is. Once you can accept that and learn how to relate to the unified field, which is through intention, not through outcome, it's through that unified intent that is here and everywhere else that ultimately this problem will resolve itself. The thing that people don't realize, I think, is that the change is, the change is already done. And now we're just in a period of time that'll be, I don't know whether it's 10 years, 20 years, I don't, hopefully not that long, where that change will manifest itself. But the, cha the, 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 the horses have left the barn, so to speak. I mean, the last thing that I'll say in terms of what's going on, is remember, remember there was, in Sag Harbor, out on Long Island, they used to catch whales, bring them on the dock, chop them up, put the blubber on a train, bring the blubber back to New York, and use it for lights on the street. Whales were electricity. And they're like, we need some light down here in the square. They're like, somebody go kill a whale. All right. Then we invented electricity. If we had the government structure we have now, the whale blubber oil guys would have paid off the government to make sure electricity never happened. That's what we have to solve. Right. And that's why these people are here. And that's why the Tea Partiers are here. And that's why this is a single unified principle that can easily get lost in, a, in the, the millions of different identities and millions of different ideas. But the identities and the ideas are the weapon of the power structure. Because when they invest you in your identity and your idea, they bring out your ego and it creates the brawl. Our weapon is our intention and our ability to align around principle and accept that we do not know, but that we also do know that our principle is that of fairness that our values are that of shared visibility, integrity, choice, in a path that leads to alignment. And that is the only thing that I actually feel like I know. And the way I live my life right now is I'm like, do I know everything? Do I know how to have shared visibility in my personal relationships, in my work relationships? Am I acting with integrity? Am, or am I holding back information that might harm me in the short term because I feel afraid because of whatever it might be, which I definitely have to do. So I more discipline where I say, no, 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 you have this is a full deal. Is everybody that I'm working with working with me of their own free choice? And do they have other choices? Real choices. Right now we're told we have choice in this country, but your choice is one gigantic bank or another gigantic sure. bank or another gigantic bank. And your choice is one gigantic health insurance company that's that's working with the government or another one. They tell you you have choice, but the fact of the matter is, as you look at the choices that are emerging in this world, those choices don't seem to be manifest. I think that that's where we're headed. Beautiful, bravo. So anyway, there's my sermon for the night. Uh, uh,